So somebody asked recently on Reddit whether you should learn C before learning Zig. And this is a question that was also asked in the past. Uh, so I'm going to try to uh, answer it here in a video. Um, although I understand that different people, different circumstances, maybe for you learning C might be the right choice. In my opinion, for the majority of us, uh, the answer is no, you should not learn C before learning Zig. And I have two arguments to support my answer. So point number one is that Zig is much better than C at building and using C libraries. When you download a C project, it's you have to learn stuff that is not the C programming language. You have to learn make, C make, auto tools, auto conf, whatever. It's it's a long list and it's messy. Um, with Zig, it's much easier to build C projects and you can also do cross compilation and more in general, um, you do everything with one language. You don't have to learn a, like a full fledged ecosystem of building tools. Um, so this is building. There's also the point of using C libraries. Uh, Andrew makes a very good point in the road to Zig 1.0 on YouTube, which I will link in the description. And I strongly encourage you to uh, take a look at. And the idea is that um, Z has some operators in the language that you can use while calling C functions that help you a lot with like cleanup. Also, Z has uh, uh, like a full range of pointer types that give you extra compile time security uh, safety uh, compared to what C offers. In C, a void star pointer could mean a lot of things, and while in Zig we have the ability to be a little bit more precise with what a pointer is, is supposed to be when it comes to nullability, when it comes to pointing to one or many items, when it comes to null termination or not, etc. So, in all of this stuff, is only going to improve moving forward. Uh, we are soon going to have a package manager, which we think of not just as a package manager for Zig, but also a package manager for C projects with the idea that you use Zig, uh, the Zig package manager to bundle a C project with a build.zig file so that you can run Zig build to build the C project. And we've seen already examples of that in the wild, but uh, hopefully, once we have the package manager, these we expect this to become kind of the norm, uh, at least for uh, projects that are still maintained today. Point number two, learning C, the language, is not as useful as learning parts of the C ecosystem. Things like um, the C memory model, virtual memory, and how that relates to pointers, the stack. Uh, syscall interfaces for your operating system. All these things have become an integral part of our hardware, our, of our OSs, and, and how we describe, for example, lower level protocols. And this part does matter, but this is a surprisingly small chunk of what is the whole C language plus its surrounding ecosystem. And you can definitely learn this stuff from Zig because in reality, what you need at that point is a systems programming mindset, uh, which you will get by learning Zig. One example, in Zig, we do not, uh, by default, link to the C standard library. We instead have our own, um, in our own standard library, we have calls directly to your OS syscalls, depending on which OS it is. Uh, at the very least, it's true for Linux. So all this stuff, um, is exposed by Zig. You're not learning an abstraction layer above C. Zig is not something that it's meant to be above Zig. Zig is a replacement for C. One last note, I understand that some people might be tempted to look into C even just because there are many more learning materials written for it than there are for Zig. But in my opinion, you will still have a strictly worse experience if you go down that road. Uh, first of all, a good chunk of those things are kind of outdated uh, by today's standard. But more importantly, in my opinion, these learning materials tend to have the problem that they conflate uh, what is specific to C, what is a C-ism, to more general concepts and fail to basically give you the full picture. One example is that C books tell you that if you want to allocate memory dynamically, you need to use malloc. And that, and that malloc is the allocator, but malloc is just one allocator offered by the C standard library. There are other implementations, and more importantly, it's not the 
bottom of the abstraction pile that you can get access to. Normally, if you're writing a program for, that runs inside an operating system for you, the bottom layer is the syscall that gives you a page worth of memory, which relates to virtual memory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I've seen people who have programmed in C who know C be surprised by this concept because in their experience they always use malloc and never ask themselves if what even is an allocator i understand that this is not the case for everybody but my point is that the that clearly these people have been exposed to learning materials that have not taught them in my opinion in the correct way so watch out for this stuff and in any case in my opinion you will really have a better time just going straight for zig thank you